spotlight this time is on Princess Tutu. Could this be that which demonstrates the mystique of anime? My answer is yes. Without further ado, let's get into Princess Tutu. Despite its girlish title, Princess Tutu is more of a coming-of-age series where we get the typical struggle of identity, friendship, and loss. I think a myriad of people can enjoy Tutu. However, when I ask myself why I even like anime so much, Princess Tutu comes to mind. It's another one of my early introductions, and I firmly believe that anime just offers a narrative spirit that is beyond that of regular cartoons. It's not just the positive messages or thematic elements, it's the delicate visuals paired with the dialogue under this blanket of culture that gives anime the feel of genuine mystique. This section of the video is going to cover character complexities and character relationships. The four protagonists of Princess Tutu are Ru, Duck, Muto, and Fakir. How can I express how fond I am of these characters? We're beginning with Ru, who's like a sulking princess of darkness. I feel that when I first watched Princess Tutu, I saw her through the lens that Duck sees her, a talented prima donna who is sad and bothered about something, but that specific something doesn't really get revealed until the end of the show. I love that this series takes its time to properly rescue Rue because it acknowledges that she's worth saving. This dips into the connection to revolutionary girl Utena, which I'll bring up shortly. Given Rue's backstory of being abducted as a child and raised by a giant crow creature, we understand that Rue's a tragic character, along with Duck, at least in the beginning, and in a way, she and Duck are both looking for acceptance. They want to stay in their roles as students of the Academy and as friends of Muto and Fakir. Then we have Duck slash Ahiru. She's a terribly endearing character. She's thrown into this ordinary life and even has two assigned friends despite being a duck under a spell. She's someone who strives to disprove the limiting beliefs of those around her. And Duck is memorable in this way. She's motivational, but Duck is also memorable because she loses everything, even her human status in the end. She doesn't really get to be in the company of Muto or Fakir, at least not as a human girl. On a separate note, I think her design is awesome. Duck's design, both as an ordinary girl and as Tutu, is delightful. Her color palette and heavy eyelashes, which are Ikuko Ito's trademark, call for this doe-eyed, doll-like charm. You cheer for Duck all throughout the series, acknowledging how she's nature's perfect choice of a duck to become a human girl. She works so hard to save and uplift her friends. She is perhaps the metaphorical prince slash savior of the story. Duck seems to have philosophies and dialogues which exceed her depicted age, even the way she defends her friends seems to be beyond her years. And now, Muto. Muto is a truly hypnotic character. The show's way of developing his heart is similarly hypnotic. This is because he's like a slow burn. The viewer waits for him to wake up and slip into his role of a prince who we only get to see a glimpse of at the very end. Part of this show's wonderful sense of anticipation, and again, mystique, is spent waiting for Muto to actualize. He has this sort of femininity woven into his character, which makes him exciting to watch. However, because he's left so vulnerable without a heart, he's kind of like an empty shell, like a puppet. This leads to moments where he becomes manipulated either by Ryu or Fakir. My absolute favorite moments are when Muto affectionately refers to Princess Tutu as just simply Tutu and is continually drawn to her. Muto is placed in the position normally reserved or expected for female characters, and this too is one of my favorite aspects to Tutu. Muto's greatest downfall is that without a heart, he can't very well recognize which feelings go where and how he truly feels. Next comes Fakir. I love Fakir, I was a Fakir girl growing up, and I think he has one of the best designs and personalities of the show. Much like the rest, he's eventually confronted with a pitfall, and, and in his case, he's too afraid to step into the role of the knight. He struggles to become someone who sets aside concern for himself to save others. He's afraid to die. 
Fakir is also pivotal to the story, not only because he's a knight, but because he's actually related to Drosselmeyer, the author of the story of Princess Tutu, or rather, the Prince and the Raven. So he still fulfills the role of a savior, just not with his sword and shield. Fakir is the will to fight. And lastly, let us consider the minor characters. The ones that I felt are worth mentioning are Miss Adel, Pique and Lilie, and Mr. Cat. But the thing that stands out to me the most about Miss Adel is her seemingly mythological aura. She was very much a character who had the same kind of knowledge that Drosselmeyer had about the story, The Prince and the Raven, and about the other townspeople being written elements of the book and therefore not being entirely real. With her knowledge, it becomes clear that part of the Princess Tutu storyline is that there are other dimensions and that Princess Tutu herself is materialized only through the use of a life form from the real world, so a duck in this case. and. Once that duck fulfills the role of Princess Tutu, the two dimensions kind of become intermingled. And the sadness for me comes through that knowledge that there are several dimensions because, you know, we never really get to see Duck sort of ever revisit the dimension where Muto and Rue are, so she loses the access to that dimension towards the end. And even though she has Fakir, and this is like a positive ending, she kind of still loses that reach to the other characters. So moving on, we have Pique and Lilie, Duck's two best friends. Pique is the one with purplish hair, and Lilie is the blonde, who is a sicko psycho who derives joy from seeing her friends suffer and um, fail. <laughs> um, they were two very joyful characters, and it was really interesting to see the storyline of Princess Tutu also have Duck rescue them, despite being minor characters. So it's a way for the story to express that Duck actually prioritized her friends from the real dimension and the friends from the story of the Prince and the Raven. Once more, we have a connection to revolutionary girl Utena, where Utena rescues Wakaba eventually from a situation. In the same way that Duck rescues Pique from an encounter with the possessed Muto. So it's these this sort of intermeshing or this combination of this whimsical dimension and the real world dimension that I absolutely love. And lastly, we have Mr. Cat, who is a humor device for the show, but aside from just being like comedy relief, I think Mr. Cat has a lot of moments of self awareness that really add to the show. And another like uh, anamorphic or humanoid animal that the show includes i think he's a surreal character and a lot of princess tutu actually has is made up of a lot of surreal elements then i'd like to conclude by giving some of my final thoughts and theories on princess tutu when i first watched this uh, i was in middle school and it blew me away back then and it blew me away again when i rewatched it as an adult but i have this theory we know that muto ends up with rue at the end even though the whole show is teases the idea that Muto actually loves Tutu or Duck. My personal theory is that Muto did love Duck slash Tutu, but he also loved Rue, so he loved both of them. Perhaps in different ways, you know, I will never know, but I think that he did love both of them, but that um, the princely duty in this case was to answer to Rue's request and uh, stay with her forever. With that being said, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in my next one. Goodbye! The Buter... The However, because he is left so...